things aren't as simple as they used to be. In the mechanical universe of Isaac Newton, the world was a smooth running clockwork. Forces were generated by gravity, electricity, or magnetism. Forces accelerate masses. Everything was the inevitable result of nature smoothly integrating the differential equations of the universe. Every effect had a closely linked cause. By about 1900, everything was pretty well explained, except for some details. Even relativity didn't disturb this view. But now we know differently. So, hold on, it's time for the quantum mechanical universe. Physicists didn't want quantum mechanics, it was forced on them because of details, like light. The common view was that light was ripples in the electric and magnetic field lines, which make alternating up and down field vectors. Since it's a wave, it interferes like a wave and makes diffraction patterns. Light reflects, and light refracts. But in any case, it's caused by an electric charge shaking or accelerating, and the energy depends on the amplitude. But there's a problem with this for very small things, like atoms. In an atom, an electron orbits the nucleus like a planet orbiting the sun. Since it's accelerating, it should give off a continuous spectrum of light, but it doesn't. It gives off or absorbs only certain specific frequencies that do follow a mathematical pattern. And when light knocks electrons out of a metal, their energy depends on the frequency, not the amplitude. So what's really going on? Nels Bohr invented a theory to explain it. He said that the electron jumps abruptly from one orbit to another. And which orbits? Just those where the difference in energy gives the proper frequencies of light. Now what's he saying? The electron doesn't swoop down into another orbit. It simply disappears from one orbit and reappears in another without going anywhere in between. Right. The only reason physicists bought this is that it works so well. With just a few simple assumptions, he could very accurately predict the observed frequencies, and even the observed size of an atom. But what makes these particular orbits so special? De Broglie and Schrodinger played with the mathematics and combined the notion of a particle and a wave. By adding several waves of slightly different frequencies, you get something that looks and acts like a particle. The momentum of the particle is just the frequency. The more different the frequencies are, the sharper the position, but the fuzzier the momentum. This reciprocal relationship is called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Now the orbits are just where the electron waves have one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, and so forth going around the nucleus. But this isn't exactly right. The current picture of an atom comes from finding the different possible ways the electron can vibrate in three dimensions. The lowest energy electron doesn't orbit at all. It just sits on top of the nucleus, spread out due to the uncertainty principle. Higher energy electron waves bunch up in donut-shaped or blob-shaped orbitals. But an electron also spins at a certain fixed rate. Just as certainty of position makes uncertain momentum, certainty of spin rate makes uncertainty of direction. We can only say that the spin is generally up or down. And since an electron is a wave, two electrons can interfere destructively or constructively. All these geometric requirements give a fixed set of states the electron can be in. Filling them in one at a time gives the periodic table. All the possible elements of chemistry and their properties are due to the allowed motion of the atom's internal parts. But there's more. There's also a periodic table of nuclear particles. Possible kinds of nucleons are given by the motion of internal parts called quarks. We still can't explain everything, but this all shows that in physics, as in computer graphics, details count. What's next? Mathematica, computer graphics to teach mathematics. 
funded with seed money from SIGGRAPH. SIGGRAPH, where as the technology matures, the hair gets shorter.